2022. For the Karnataka EV Abhyana 2022, the Electric Vehicle Expo come awareness campaign organized by Government of Karnataka and Bangalore Electricity Supply Company. Yesterday we had a full day of very insightful uh, sessions. We talked about uh, future electric vehicle, future of transportation. Uh, perspective of the industry was taken on uh, the government of uh, Karnataka's EV policies and programs. We covered the cyber security aspects for EV charging uh, ecosystem. And uh, we talked about the challenges in implementation of the charging infrastructure, as well as uh, uh, you know, all the discussions went up to uh, late in the evening till we had uh, our, uh, the uh, energy and the enthusiasm of the speakers was, was good and the discussions were very, very uh, useful. And a lot of uh, key points have been drawn out of the discussion, which will be taken forward by BESCOM and the uh, government of Karnataka in formulating the policy. Today we will be starting our uh, session, uh, our fourth technical session, uh, which is uh, titled Emerging Technologies, New Generation Batteries, Wireless uh, Charging uh, and uh, Vehicle to Grid Technologies. And we will also be covering uh, the role of renewable energy in boosting the EV uh, adoption. So we, we understand that you know globally uh, electric vehicle market is growing exponentially and owing to the various reforms the uh, the world uh, with respect to bridging the energy gap and energy security uh, climate change and technological and uh, instruction advancement that we have seen it's uh, quite evident that electric uh, vehicles uh, will soon be uh, dom dominating uh, globally and india has unveiled uh, the National Electric uh, Mobility Mission uh, Plan 2020 and 2013, and uh, followed by uh, uh, various schemes that government is, uh, has implemented, like uh, faster adoption and uh, manufacturing uh, hybrid electric uh, vehicle train scheme, and the electric campaign, and various uh, uh, state schemes are uh, on the plate to boost the electric vehicle adoption in the state. And uh, uh, another upcoming uh, revolution that we have uh, the likely to see uh, electric vehicles, uh, the, you know, electric vehicles being used as uh, virtual power plants uh, for uh, supporting the grid at the peak uh, time. And a targeted, uh, you know, a couple of targeted, targeted studies have been undertaken uh, for electric vehicle batteries being used uh, as the virtual uh, power plants, uh, you know, uh, power plants. Uh, electric batteries are uh, also seen as a source of uh, energy uh, and uh, you know, supplying back to the grid at the time of need and managing the grid services. And the uh, EV owners, uh, they uh, can benefit uh, uh, from uh, the uh, green electricity and the electricity that they are using. They can also support uh, the uh, ongoing uh, uh, activities of uh, the grid. And a lot of um, uh, new technologies that we have seen, emerging technologies coming uh, into play. Uh, wireless uh, charging is uh, one of the key uh, technologies that we will be hearing from our uh, speaker. And uh, uh, we can bridge the connectivity with you know, uh, another uh, uh, technology that we are looking forward to using. Uh, then uh, there is a uh, peak demand and they can supply back to the grid. Uh, uh, to support uh, the, uh, the uh, high demand and reducing the overall population cost. So that's uh, the background. I would like to now welcome our uh, speaker for today. Please uh, put your hands together uh, for uh, welcoming the uh, first speaker, uh, Dr. Raji Gupta. He is the founder and managing director of Victim uh, Metronics Private Limited. Uh, I would request you to please take a seat this side. Uh, Joining, uh, welcoming um, the Tiger Mitra, Professor from IIT Mumbai. And we will, uh, we will have uh, two speakers joining us virtually. Uh, we will have uh, Dr. Rajiv Gar, the Professor of UCLA and the founder director of Smart Energy Research Center uh, at UCLA. He will be joining us soon. And we have uh, Mr. Uh, Ranjan, uh, Senior Vice President for uh, Strategy, Utilities and Retail uh, Renewable uh, Wind Power. Joining us uh, since currently he's been here, but uh, it's late evening for him, but uh, he will be joining us. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, with that, I would like to now request our first uh, speaker uh, for today. Uh, 
and we have each and every particle. So what sense can move? That depends on your pathways, how you define your pathway. So this is called cell engineering. So one part is material engineering, our own cell cell engineering. In fact, that we do from the materials engineering to the cell engineering. So I'm not working on different new material. We work on the same material, let's say LFP, how to make it more advanced. So that's my research area. I started doing from there to the cell engineering up to the cell level. So if anyone is interested, you go to the next slide. Yeah, you can see this is the prototyping unit. But uh, left hand side, this is a prototyping unit. You can have prototyping about four kilowatt hour per day. That capacity you can use just to do uh, to understand how the battery can work. So if any industry is interested or any is interested to understand the battery work is there. Let's say you transfer on technology, technology may be to be proven, and there you can help it. So this uh, facility is made for usually for research, advanced research, and so research as well as for the industry to be created their uh, understanding. So we have started making a lot of cells. You can see the one uh, which I'm talking which I'm going to talk today. It is a new cell, and then uh, all the lithium battery also we are working on sodium and sodium and battery uh, along with the industry to see how good they are. So go to the next level. So this is the interesting point. If you are interested, this is the world map. And the world map, if you uh, divide this with the zone line, there is a two zones as well. One zone is belongs to us, which is the zone one, the typical zone, the temperature, average temperature is 30 degrees. That'd be one degree. So, and we are using the vehicles. Mostly we are using the vehicles, this two wheeler and three wheeler, obviously because of the price point. And the shorter distance of travel, we are not looking for the longer distance travel and the harsh road conditions because our road conditions may not be good for electric vehicles. Because the electric vehicle needs a very smooth road. If you don't have the smooth road, the electric vehicle efficiency comes down. I think that is another point we should be careful on that. Okay, so zone one. Temperature, apart from temperature, all the other points are very really dangerous for the battery. Okay, so it is the point which is affecting the cycle life, even battery performance, everything because of that. Second zone, also problematic because that is a subtropical zone where the temperature is 20 to 30 degrees centigrade, even some, some places which is below temperature, even below 10 degrees centigrade. And they are looking for long distance travel. Even if you look at the US, they are looking for a 500. One charge. We are not looking for that right, right now. So, and premium cars, they don't want that small cars like a two wheeler, two wheeler. They want the bigger car. Their problem also different because of energy density. So, this is actually shows you this makes a very special kind of conditions to make the electric vehicle. Okay. So, the mix and all the chemistry what we are talking about right now, uh, all the mix is not being suitable for that condition. Okay, so be a next slide. Okay, this is maybe uh, not very uh, visible to you. You can see this is the uh, advanced battery going on. Right now, if you look at it, these batteries, these batteries are around 160 to 180 watt per kg in the cell level. Go to the path level, it comes down to 100 to 140. But here we are looking at the pad up to 20 30. This is a two way it is looked at it. One is uh, without compromising the price point, other one is with compromising the price point. And what the technology can go up to, uh, let's say, 400, 500 water per kg, and then go to the upper one, which is going beyond 800 water per kg. So the chemistry can be looked at it. And there is a road map. It's not visible, that's why I'm not showing it here. And give an another plot, which shows the different technology. And how we are right now uh, situated. If you look at the first one, you can end up with NMC chemistry, which is uh, mostly for electric vehicles. The theoretical value is about 200 to 250. You can accept around 180 to 200 right now, energy density. Next is we are talking about sodium and battery. That energy density is around 90, right now, 100, around 100. It can go up to 300. That means if you look at it, I have given this bar, which is 200 to 100, many chemistries are actually there. So that sodium can take that. If you are using low uh, distance vehicles, sodium with the same power, if you give sodium also can be another solution. 
Next is LFP. I think most of the vehicles are LFP based technology. Where they are, they are actually one for two to two hundred. Maximum two ten there is the best technology. You may not know right now. There is a great technology going on. That need to pack new module. Exactly. So that goes to two hundred. So if you look at it, that that is also which is you are using right now in this the van. Other one is lithium sulfur, which I am going to talk about, which is not right now in practical uh, field. That is going to come. That energy density is almost 350 to 450, very high. If we compare with the current technology in the lithium sulfur sun, they are the difference in this heat time. Okay, so your energy density is heat time. So there's a one charge. This battery can go 200 kilometers, that will go 600 kilometers. That's the difference. Then on the next day, so this is let the other batteries, metal foot batteries, nickel cadmium, metal hydrate batteries, all are below 70 to 72 70. So this shows that this is the journey where most of the people are working and shows that which chemistry you should take it to make it in your module or in your application. Where sodium also coming up, that's the reason sodium people are looking at it. The power performance of sodium is not good, but it needs a research uh, to improve the performance. So sodium can be another competitor. Okay, go to the next yeah. So today I'll be talking about lithium sulfur. Lithium sulfur we compared with the current technology. Current technology anode is graphite, other side is metal oxide, say cobalt metal oxide or lithium iron phosphate. Here, lithium sulfur technology, graphite is replaced by lithium metal cell. And the all metal oxide on the cathode side is replaced by sulfur. That means there is no problem of the metal oxides, like if it's cobalt oxide, nickel oxide, or manganese oxide, there is no transmission metal and the sulfur. So what are the benefits you get? This side is all the benefits. So look at the benefit is availability. We India has a lot of petrochemical industries we have. Petrochemical industry having sulfur as a high product. So it's sulfur is huge. And the cost level. It's very less compared to any transmission metal after what right now. So uh, in the availability and the cost of sulfur cathode will be the best best one in the uh, current scenario. India is some sulfur, I already said I talked about and sodium source also in India, even any country sodium source is there. So if we combine this sodium and sulfur, that will be the best ecological uh, let's say environmental friendly battery should be. Right now, even my lab also we are working in the sodium sulfur battery, but it is in the research field. That's why I'm not showing you that. Okay, use sulfur. What are the benefits of this? I get the benefit of very huge energy density. We already talked about it. Energy density is very high. Even sulfur energy is 1675 milliampere gram compared with the even the even the heat is around uh, 220 uh, what are the table? Uh, here you get around 200, 200. 450 water could be. Critical capacity, critical energy is very high, but it's so we can extract even 400, 500 water per kg out of sulfur battery. And another thing is, we can, if I use lithium sulfur battery, we can actually reduce a lot of manufacturing facility because uh, I don't know you know or not, this is, if I use a lithium, uh, like the lithium technology, current lithium technology, the graphite is used, and graphite needs a huge conditioning. It needs a four to five days surface layer formation. That is zero problem for the large industry level, zero level industries. And that will be reduced if I use a lithium as a metal. So metal doesn't need conditioning. So it will be immediately four days to five days conditioning will be stopped. There will be no required. So if I let's say I will make a 50,000 sales or 50 lakhs of sales a day, that needs to be stored in a uh, in conditioning temperature. It takes a lot of sales. So equipment sales and the manufacturing time will be reduced once I use just replace graphite by metal, lithium metal. So and there is no oxygen. So which is another problem right now we are facing the oxygen evolution is happening, that we just not fire when exhaling happens because of metal oxide. Yeah, sulfur doesn't have any oxygen. Oxygen evolution from cathode itself is restricted. That is the reason we are saying. Problems are there, sulfur, there is a huge problem. That you can see it is not economically, it's not in market. So if you look at it, sulfur having a poor conductivity. So it is known that sulfur is not conducting. So that's a major problem. Next problem, sulfur when it reacts to lithium, the byproduct of the atom, the byproduct actually in the liquid electrolyte. That's a problem. 
And then there is this reaction process happening in the lithium and sulfur. So that is very sluggish. Sluggish means it's very slow reaction. It needs a catalyst, it needs a temperature to enhance the cavity. It's a kind of problem. And sulfur reactions, if you, you can let uh, one another thing is like a, you are using lithium metal as an anode. That needs to be tapulated, and that person, this lithium anode, anode has a problem. It can create a dendrite, it can be a problem, but then we need to be protected. And another problem is, so, so let's say I make a battery and charge it and keep it at night, and morning if I come back, this battery will be discharged, completely discharged. This is not a case for lithium and battery. You keep the charge in the night, Next day, you can use it. Third discharge of lithium sulfur battery is another problem. Another problem is internal resistance because internal resistance changes of this battery is if you are in GMS, design in GMS, this is a big problem. Lithium sulfur battery. And there is another case. You know, a lot of things, uh, problems are there, which is a major fundamental problem. That's the reason lithium sulfur is still not in the market, but a lot of things are going on to solve that problem. Okay, if you, are not, if you are not understanding or you to ask any question, please, uh, you can ask. You have a lot of time. You can discuss about it, okay? And stop me anywhere if you are uh, thinking that you need to know. So I'm talking about which is not there in the market, okay? Next. Okay, so let me start with making a battery, lithium sulfur. Sulfur is a cathode and lithium is a metal. What are the reactions in start? Lithium, the sulfur battery main problem is is in solid form, sulfur needs to go to the solubilized form. The first reaction happens with the two solubilized. And once it is solid, then it started to lithium adding. The reaction reaction happens. The keep on adding the lithium. It adds 16 amount of power unit, 16 amount of lithium. That's why energy density is very high. So these reactions are very complicated and need to understand the problem. And uh, can you put it on? Yeah. So, if you look at the research plot, it will looks like this. So, bladder, if, you, if you are familiar with the lithium iron phosphate or lithium manganese oxide or cobalt oxide, you can see the single, uh, single platter. These will have a two platters. One is uh, for the first reaction, which is the reaction, other one is the reaction, is recrystallizing. I am not going to detail on it. So this is a research topic. So, here, to have much more utilization of sulfur so that you have a more energy density. So this is all reactions, all the scientists are looking for that higher uh, utilization of sulfur, higher utilization of lithium on the power of sulfur. Next. Okay, so I will show you what is the problem right now. So once you lithium sulfur is started reacting with lithium, it's called that product is called polysulfide. A lot of polysulfide happens and the polysulfide are soluble in the water. in the solution. Here, yeah, can you put it started yet with sulfur? Sulfur, you know, is a ring compound. If you know from your in the first book, it is a ring compound. The first reaction happens, it is open by ring. It is a linear chain. Then it started adding lithium one by one. Can you put it one by one? So you see, if it first is a charge condition, when you start a sulfur reaction, the charge condition. Now lithium is reacting, it is going to the discharge state. So first reaction completely opposite that what lithium iron phosphate or lithium cobalt oxide is. This is the first is charge point. So once this the products happen, this all are soluble, some of the products are soluble, the products are insoluble. Soluble product, sorry, soluble product so this soluble is means this is a product form immediately solution is going to the solution. So this actually creating a lot of problems. The main research is going on how to stuck this together and keep it in the electrode itself so that I will not lose the electrode material. So that this is I have just shown you. And the sluggish I talked about kinetics because of the transition happen, that transition is the sluggish, is a uh, problem. If you want to have batteries with a very high rate, let's say I let you go with PC, 5C, okay, here in the same way, this amount because of the sluggishness of the kinetics. So we, we are improving that situation set right now. Go to next slide. Yeah, keep on adding. Okay, so this is the electrode, the cell discharge that I was talking about. What happens in the cell discharge? Let's say you make a battery and keep it for uh, is a charge condition. Now keep it overnight. What is happening? The sulfur, due to the concentration difference, 
is actually going diffusing from cathode side to anode side. This is a concentration difference. This is the concentration diffusion. This diffusion happening going to the anode, which is a lithium. And lithium again reacting chemically, not electrochemically, reacting chemically. Similar things happening, reopening, adding it. This reaction, we are not doing anything. Just shape the battery, this is happening. This is called chemical reaction, other one is electrochemical reaction. So, all the process actually diffusing your capacity. That's why cell research is very high for this battery. So, this is another major problem for batteries. Right now, people are working on it. So, to restrict this. So, you make a battery, keep it, this reaction needs to be restricted. So, this is not happening right now. So, go to the next. Next slide. So that another problem means that the polysulfide is problem that is you see when you hear the polysulfide the red one is actually diffusing, diffusing into electrolyte. And there will be a binder, we will have a binder and the carbon carbon LED, which is in the electrostructure itself. The carbon and the binder is loaded with electro electromagnetic properties, electro electromagnetic property. This is another research area right now. How to with this red part in the electrode itself, we are not moving it. At the same time, electro, electro, electromagnetic property of polymer need to be looked at it. Because of volume expansion, it again goes back to the volume quantity. So that polymer has to also have the same time printing and expansion in time. Okay, that's another problem. Okay, go to the next slide. So right now, people are under coin cell. So if you look at the coin cell, you know the small bottom cell. Where you are using very high amount of electrolyte, where you are using very small amount of cat. But when you go to pouch level, that is the scenario completely changes because we are targeting of 400 to 500 water per kg, where electrolyte cannot be that much. So this is a bigger problem. So you cannot take the amount like a lithium type very high amount. Then we, this ratio, whatever is written, if you want to achieve 450 to 500, this needs to be maintained. So we need to have a very high real capacity, very low electrolyte, all I mentioned. So once you have that and get the good performance, then only this power cell will be with 450 to 500 and the battery performance, a battery will be good for market. This is right now a problem. You are okay. If you are looking at all the research on the coin cell, even my lab, we are good after the coin cell, but when you go to the power level, immediately everything changes. This is another active research is going on right now. Go to the next level. Okay, so one of the companies right now, people are looking at this lithium sulfur. So if you look at it, the major companies are in the US, United States. The one is Oxys, Oxys and the Iron Power, and then Iron Power. These are the three major, uh, uh, let's say, it, it, business groups are already making these sulfur batteries. The pattern light in the power cell is restricted to 100, but they are already in the demonstration. If you look at it, the vehicle aviation industry, now uh, aviation like a flight airplane is already powered by iron power. Even this is they are a huge project with their, their defense uh, ministry here. They are implementing right now for drone power. So this drone is for photography, the drone is for the human uh, transfer. So energy density, there is no limit. Sulfur battery. So you can have 400, 500 watt of a kg, which is already 4 to 5 tons of your current technology. And application, that's why there is the application already there, but it's not satisfied for the current technology, which is already 5,000 percent. So that is the problem right now. And people are working, and everyone is working on it. So next slide. Okay, so here, so if you look at it, so if we are compared with NMNT and the NCR chemistry versus sulfur chemistry. Differences. If you look at it, the sulfur utilization is very low. Compared to the same uh, structure, sulfur is sulfur utilization is very low. Compared to the NCM, which is running is going on, 76 percent of active material. Let's say nickel, uh, nickel, cobalt, manganese, uh, is 76 percent. Compared to sulfur, is 17 percent. So we need to increase the sulfur content. That is the problem. We have increased the sulfur content. We can need a huge supply. And that is you bring down. That's the research is going on right now. Several so other things are there, all components need to be researched because of the new technology. Uh, uh, if you look at it, my uh, lab and my group, we have a huge paper on, uh, let's say, large quantities of paper on lithium sulfur. You can look at it to see what are the directions we are working right now. Go to next. Okay, so what can you, you know, why it's actually fails? So you don't understand that you make a battery, the first, uh, okay, go one by one. Yes. So what they have done, they dismantled the cell 
and remove the cathode and do the fresh cathode. And then the first one, since they see there is a deterioration of capacity battery. Next, what they have done, they remove the electrolyte. The remove the battery, like dismantle the battery, remove the electrolyte, put a new electrolyte. Just to understand which one, which factor is actually problem. The next slide, let's put it on. Yeah. Still, there is a problem of the electrolyte. They remove the electrolyte, there is a problem. What have they mixed? They remove the anode, like a metal anode, and put the first anode. Then the stability, can you go to the Yeah, the stability, the middle one, the stability is good. So that shows that this battery failed because of metal anode. So once the metal anode is there, there is a problem. So you need to rectify. If you want to have a large cycle life, you need to have a better type anode. Uh, uh, let's go to the next slide. In my lab, we are doing this. This is the current solution. So uh, we have protected this lithium metal by lithium nitrate formation. I'm not going to the because of it, you can see thousand cycles are getting. The same technology when we put into the power cell, I am not getting even hundred cycles. That's a huge problem between small scale to large scale. So that seems uh, working right now. Uh, okay, next we have seen there is no dendrite. We can easily have dendrites in our uh, process. There is no dendrite. Go to next. Yeah, this is a product we made it. We already showed the picture. One enter all. So it's good. But we see the up to hundred cycles is going on, but there is a Decay is there, is decay is going on. So, that could be another few years timeline. We can have a battery out of it, uh, with things of sulfur in India. We go to the next. Okay, so problem, I already said sulfur is a problem. We need to reduce the uh, electrolyte, we need to reduce well, a lot of things need to be worked on. It. Don't mind with it. Don't mind with it. It started with like a major contribution, started 2020. And then by 2030, we have a more than cycle life if the major things will go up. And I'm sure another thing time then you can see this battery in the innovation. I'm sure on that. Each everything industry will be using because of new energy density. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Can you put it? Uh, thank you. So if you want to have this, my email address is given. I just type my name in Google itself, you get a lot of things. A uh, lot of uh, funding need to be uh, uh, acknowledged. This is my group. Kids are not there. They are not my group, but they are students. But they are my students. Are that uh, thing. Okay, so thank you very much. If you have any questions, any comment, I'm here. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much uh, for the for the details of presentation about the research you are doing on experimenting in different classes in your industry. Looking at the current scenario with the research plans, globally that we have, we, are, we have to uh, uh, we are looking at uh, different interventions and uh, the demand that uh, we will see in the future. We need a lot of uh, different variety of efficient technologies and the battery chemistry coming forward for this and uh, the new electricity transformation that we are looking for. Thank you so much for that. I mean, we are uh, moving on to the questions that are the question as well. And we will move on to our next uh, presenter for today. Uh, Mr. Abhishek Randan has joined us online. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Abhishek, for joining us. He's currently in the US and it's very late in the evening. Um, uh, Mr. Andy will be uh, covering the, uh, we'll be talking about the research for solar TV and the, the electric vehicle charging in the, uh, with the green electricity and also talking about the single window taking that electric vehicle and uh, also cover green open access and the EV uh, charging. So, I hope you have been safe uh, and uh, look forward to an insightful session from you. Thank you so much. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Thank you, Rina. And am I audible, Rina? I can hear you completely. Am I audible now? Am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. 
I can hear you. Are you able? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, can we something? I can hear you clearly. I can hear you. Am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes you are audible. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Morning, everyone, and thank you, ISEA, for this opportunity. And uh, very briefly, I will uh, talk about in four slides. In this session on emerging technologies in the EV charging, I think there is an echo. Okay, uh, so yeah, the, the topic is very pertinent. We talk about EV charging uh, and emerging technologies. I'll be covering two points basically. One is as a service, EV charging is a service. So what is the focus area in India? Second, briefly, I'll talk about what B2G pilots, uh, probably California is planning to do. Recently, California Utility Commission, they have approved a pilot. So very briefly, what is their goal and what are the nuances in terms of the similarity or differences in India and, and say California, for example. So we'll start with this initiative. The single window portal, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, this initiative was started in Delhi uh, city last year in November. And there is a portal by each of the discounts in Delhi where the consumers can actually log on and avail charging as a service in subscription model as well as they can buy out the charges. So here is a glimpse of uh, what you can see the charges which are available, the models which are available and also the consumers can avail the subsidy by the government of Delhi which is around 6,000 rupees per point for the first 30,000 points. Okay. So this initiative has been started very recently around six, six months back. And this subsidy actually means that the LEVAC charger, which is the latest standard approved by the BIS in August last year, these charges are uh, about 2,500 rupees after subsidy. These are sufficient to charge uh, both the four-wheeler, three-wheeler, and two-wheeler as well in a, a slow fashion. So the idea was to proliferate the EV charger to uh, workplace, to homes, malls, schools, colleges, etc., etc. And this will complement the public charging fast services. Okay, so as per one of the studies that was done, uh, study showed that about 80% of the charging going to happen at workplace or businesses, malls, homes, curbside, that is Kirana shop, etc. And in Delhi, for example, and for that matter, uh, generally our country, about 70% of the vehicles are two wheeler and three wheeler. So the idea is to keep our focus on the vehicle while also cater to the four wheeler. So with these uh, parameters in the mind, uh, this was designed and this is under implementation already at the, uh, in, in Delhi, for example. 
So if you see here, these are the two different models under which the services are available to the consumers. So the first is the one-time payment capex model, where the consumers can buy out immediately and uh, they get a three-month, three-year maintenance, and installation is being done by the OEM. Just like rooftop solar, here the installation is being done by the OEM at the home or offices or malls wherever they are. Second is if you are procuring a minimum 10 number of EV charges, uh, you can avail of a subscription service. So that is rupees per charger per month kind. And those rates are already discovered, they are already published on the website, which is in public domain. Three year service and that can be availed. Online payment facility is there by the charging services will be given by the CPOs. This is very suitable for, say, for example, RWA society, offices, malls, uh, hospitals, educational institutes, etc. So, this is the grace of the uh, portal, which is already live and uh, it can be seen on Switch Delhi website of uh, Government of Delhi. Uh, one can find the links through which uh, this is working. People are uh, resorting to use. Now, uh, California V2G pilot, uh, very recently in last month, the California Public Utility Commission has approved the V2G pilot. So that is bi directional in uh, costing about $11.7 million. Now, this is for one of the investor known utility area called Pacific Gas Electric PGNT. What they estimate is uh, in the ETG, about 469 megawatt of potential is there where the vehicles can inject into the grid, considering only Nissan Leaf vehicles. And they say that almost, and this is the potential, so they estimate to harness about 5% of the potential, totaling about 23 24 megawatt by year 2023. These are some of the key objectives uh, you can see on the screen, uh, which is there for the pilot. Three pilots, when I say the one is for the residential uh, single family dwelling unit pilot, and that is the major one out of 11.77 billion dollars is for that only. And the objectives of the same is uh, they are given five objectives for year. One is the backup power they want to demonstrate in 2022, customer bill management system, real time energy, renewable integration. So, here they are planning to integrate the rooftop solar. So the plan is to incentivize consumers to, instead of injecting or exporting the rooftop solar generation to the grid, you charge your electric vehicle then, that is one. And second is during the uh, peak hours, EV export for grid services for the resource adequacy part. This is subjected to, uh, I mean, this is proposed to be demonstrated for year 2020. Now, there are two, uh, one very important point to understand is in, in California, for example, main EVs are four wheelers, cars, sedans. So the battery size would be upwards of 30 kilowatt hour and above. But in our country, in India, we have more of two wheelers and three wheelers. Uh, so the battery size is typically less. So considering that, uh, possibly the EV V2G services can be designed for areas like cluster bus charging areas, or uh, a parking lot where four wheelers are going to be installed. So, not every house will be interested or sufficient to do the V2G. Anyway, so the main charging standards are CHAdeMO and CCS. So, CHAdeMO is already having a capability of bi directional and exporting to the grid. Communication is already there. Protocol being what they are proposing is open idea. So, uh, and CCS, there are two ways to do it. There are two pathways. So, uh, they are they are working on uh, one of the pathways and they uh, want to demonstrate this. This is a technology demonstrator, which is being funded by the uh, regulator or the California Public Utility Company. So, similarly, they are also, the third pilot is for, the second was for CNI consumers. The first was for residential and third is for uh, microgrid. So, when there are wildfires, there is no grid connectivity, so therefore how these uh, batteries can be used to set up a microgrid or a backup power for the uh, cutout consumers. So I'll summarize here. So what is happening in Delhi, for example, there is a separate EV metered connection provision already approved by the Honorable Commission in Delhi. So this is going to help a lot in the V1G. V1G is nothing but the unidirectional. So you can 
you got time to wait for for time of use charging for EV, you can shift the EV charging demand from peak hours to non peak hours. Uh, this potential, for example, in California, they are estimating 5000 megawatt, 5 gigawatt basically. So, separate EV meter connection can enable both V1G and V2G, just like you have net metering in the rooftop solar. Now, the EV's batteries can be accorded status similar to RTS PV plus battery storage and with net metering benefit. So, the consumer with RTS PV, rooftop solar PV, can be having an incentive to charge EV from solar instead of the grid. And this can be enabled through TOE rates. EVs can discharge and reduce the load of the consumer during the peak hours and peak saving incentives can be accorded to the consumers. Centralized utility-led single window scheme can help a lot in initially, uh, you know, uh, unlocking the EV jinx. Chicken and egg problem, as we understand, charging comes first or the uh, vehicle comes first. That can be uh, un unraveled through this. And of course, the private sector participation is very, very important. So the impaneled OEMs are nothing but the private sector partners. They, they, the charge point operators, basically. So, uh, initially also the home and workplace, you can start with the low capacity AC charging initially, which will help a synergy with grid and EV demand. Later on, yes, we can move ahead and uh, go forward to uh, high capacity um, charging even in the homes, etc., whenever it is required. And this system will be a complementary to the public charging station for interstate uh, movement, for example, intercity movement, interstate movement. For which the government's team is already there to install every 25 kilometers fast public charging station. Last, uh, we have green open access rules being notified by the Ministry of Power, Government of India, where every 100 kilowatt and above sanctioned load consumer can avail and demand green uh, power from that utility or from third party. This is also going to spur a lot of green power charging, maybe native, maybe through uh, <laughs> Uh, in in spaces like RWA where the EV load can go beyond 100 kilowatt easily, so this is also going to spur a lot. Uh, uh, so uh, initially, if the discoms can facilitate this, that will be great. So the focus would be two pillars and three pillars. So with this, I think I'll end my submission and thanks a lot for the patient hearing. Am I audible? Yes, thank you so much, uh, Abhishek, for this insightful uh, presentation and uh, you know, various uh, opportunities that we have uh, in bringing uh, different uh, technologies and different uh, adoptions here in our world. So, thank you for the time. We will be able to the questions uh, before we move on to our next. Uh, Thank you for today, I'm um, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Rajiv Gaur. He has joined us from uh, UCLA and he's the founder of the West Coast and Margaret Energy Research Center at UCLA. Very much. I'm going to try and share my slides here. Just give us a second. We can hear you, but we can't see you. So just give us a second. Uh, I, I can see you and I can hear you. I'm just trying to see how I can share my slides. Yes, you are uh, visible and audible to us now. Do you have a presentation or? Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to share my slides. Give me a second here. I'm not sure. It, it doesn't seem to want to allow me to share my slides. Um, sure what to do. Um, I, I hit the share button, but uh, it, it, let me let me try again. Are you it, the says, the button, sir? it says open system preferences. There's a share button, but I think he's getting a message. And then just share. Should I email my slides to someone? Well, that is also fine. You can email it to 
any anyone who visualizes that you have from our side, the Rina's web TV or the. Uh, I'm not able to understand what you're saying. The, the, the audio is kind of not coming too good. My question is, should I email the slides to somebody? I can hear you, but your audio is quite uh, horrible. Should I email my slides was the question I was asking. Yes, please email it to us. Okay, so I have now just sent the slides over. I'm sending it to uh, Reggie and Ronkini. Uh, is, uh, is that good? Hello? I guess I'll send it to everybody who's on the... Um, give me a second, I'm gonna send it to everyone. On the smart grid list, on the India smart grid. Okay, I'm sending it to everyone. Um, Rajit sir, we I have uh, posted in the chat box. Uh, uh, the email ID I have posted uh, to you in the chat box. You can check it. Uh, presentation we will have our next presenter uh, to join us today, uh, Dr. Rashi Gupta, founder and managing the director of Vision uh, Mechatronics Private Limited. We'll be uh, talking about the new generation bathroom. Yeah, I'm currently uh, talking about the EV electric vehicle safety issues that we are facing, which is also a very important issue. And uh, uh, I think this is something we're really looking forward to hear from Dr. Rashi. Dr. Rashi, our presentation is on, and the stage is yours. A very good morning to everyone all present here online and uh, physically for this conference. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, we have been, um, the past few days, talking a lot about EVs. We have been understanding. Uh, we had a morning EV rally also. We have seen a lot of news. Uh, we also saw uh, a very good presentation on the new technology by Professor Sarkar Mitra as well. Then we did hear what Abhishek Randall said on the integration of renewables also and having EV 72 g and v one g and what comes the core of a bathroom? The just of cells that we are looking at. The new process we came, are you just looking at cells? Yes, they form 50% of the bathroom. So what is the other 50% of the bathroom that needs to actually be a very crucial and important role in the safety, in the, in the integration that we are actually looking at, in the functionality that we are looking at? So when you talk of a battery, a battery also comprises of a battery management system, and which is the brain of the entire battery pack. If you do not have a good intelligent brain, we really think where battery can function the way we want it to. You can actually do a V1G or a V2G, can it be really safe? So we need to understand what is the effectiveness of a battery management system and then what role does it play in the safety, between the effectiveness of a battery pack and then actually having a renewable energy integration. Whether your battery pack will support all of this is the prime question that we need to answer today. Everything is available. We have a lot of facilities in terms of uh, we have a lot of facilities where the government are very proactive in terms of adopting new technology. We even have the new, um, you have seen uh, the manufacturing research coming, you know? But uh, a lot of the work is not great. But that's sufficient. Ah, yeah, thank you. Anyway, I'll say more. So, the thing is, 
how does it do it? What does it do it mean to actually prevent the thermal damage? First of all, it will have an only protection so that there is never an overcharge or overdischarge. It will manage to release the cells so that the mix, so we have any cell battery that we have multiple cells close to each other. So one cell, when it, it is uh, in a difficulty in this cell, automatically the mother of the cell also gets into this cell. So this is the responsibility of the donor to come it off and not let the other cells to come into this cell. So this is any behavior that is happening that comes under predictive and preventive monitoring. So I also regulate the temperature for the battery to go out of range in very low temperatures or in extremely high temperatures. Monitor the voltage of each and every cell, which is very crucial, which is not happening at the moment, and communicate any kind of misbehavior that comes into a flow. Next, please. So, what does BMS do? If you can see here on the screen, there is a fixed zone depicted by the yellow section on the graph. There is an optimum zone which is depicted by the green zone on the graph, and the red is the danger zone. So whenever the cell or the battery pack goes into the danger zone, you will experience fires, explosions, or maybe shut off of the battery and it's not going to come on functionality of the battery. But you are in the optimum zone, you can expect the best of life, you can expect the best of performance from your battery pack. So the beam is supposed to maintain this into the green zone. Next please. Now, what does preventive and predictive monitoring actually do? When you have a preventive and predictive monitoring, you get a real time data. At any given point of time, you have actually what's happening in your battery pack. You can see that, you can analyze that, you can actually potentially find out if there are failures happening. You can only diagnose it. You can also detect how much is remaining life in the battery pack. You can promise 8,000 titles, 10,000 titles, 4,000 titles, but you actually get them as a big question. So, you can actually determine the protocol, you can determine the amount of life available. So, you can actually detect it by the cells in the battery bath, you can alert for unusual behavior, and there could be a feedback to control. Next, please. Now, when we were talking about cell balancing, there are two very important categorizations of cell balancing. One is active cell balancing, and one is a passive cell balancing. If you show me a video, very easily understand what is after them for a passive cell balance. Take a video, So, the data is clear, I'll just quickly understand, uh, you need to understand. So, what happens is, uh, like I said, you know, no two cells are of the same type. So, even though you're running from the same batch, there will be quite amount of differences. Now, what happens in a passive balancing is that you cannot balance the batteries at the time of charging and discharging. Now, if you do not charge, if you cannot balance it at the time of charging and discharging, the difference between the two cells will become much larger. And if you can do them actively while charging and discharging, the difference reduces and you actually get better performance, better life. It's not true. Okay. Well, active balancing gives you the most effective means of energy that is stored into your battery. So I just wanted to show this video. Which can actually make it very easy to understand. Okay, next one. Just like we have IP data, we have easy data. Both of them now. Okay, next one. I think we'll have to change the window. It must be playing on you today. Now 
There is an instant energy transfer in terms of acting knowledge. So you can get the maximum benefit of individual health from this case. Next. So now that we saw what happened in this child, both the child will increase the child like throughout in the market, like giving the market, and now what happens is the rate committed and in the market is in one child, okay, that you never get it. And over the time of the market, the market gets older and older, the rate is reduced by product production because the child is going to be there. And then you have passive balancing, which will not extract the maximum growth of the whole happy. So that's the case here. Now, I will connect swiftly and talking about index management. Now, as you all know, we are going to IOT and internet connected. So we will say this entire hybrid event is happening because we have internet connections here. So why not use it to have maximum benefit by adding our remote monitoring to the entire so this is the entire uh, battery path and understand at a real time what is happening inside the battery, how the analysis, how the internet of things involved into the battery to get the maximum benefit out of it. So what you can do is to have a remote monitor. Well, this is an actual live cycle from ESS that I'm showing you right now. Where it shows what was the generation, what was the consumption, what was the battery consumption. You can have the whole of current temperature at any given point of time from anywhere across the world. Now, what you want is where you want to have an internet connected phone, right? So why not utilize it to go to entire benefit of a remote monitoring system out of your battery pack? Now, this is a cell level monitoring that I just have uh, in the, we have implemented, and this is for an, an internet connected blue method, and you can pass in the cell at any given point of time, see what are the temperatures, what are the voltages, what are the currents, whether the balancing is happening or not, whether each cell is even the property, what has happened. So when you have a real time insight at the cell level, you actually can definitely improve the battery performance at any given time of time. So we are all the people are giving everything to talk, it can share the data my friend of Sandra. It can share the data and it can prolong your battery life, which is very crucial. Because we are investing a lot of money to the battery. But you understand the 
कमिंग कॉलम बाथरूम का तो बाकी अगर कार्य करूं तो बाथरूम क्या करूं मैं ओनर के समय दूं हाउ रेस तो दिया बाथरूम में आपके आपके लिए भी बहुत सारे आराम के जरिए वैल्यू कम Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rashid, for that very really fascinating uh, presentation and uh, uh, indicating the importance of having the right back in our system and ensuring the safety and planning, uh, you know, better planning and doing the back in our system. So, thank you so much. I mean, uh, that's a very good thing. You know, now, once again, welcome uh, Dr. Rajat Dad. You have his presentation and uh, Dr. Dev, uh, are you audible? Yes, I, I can hear you. Yes, that's right. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Hello, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, yeah, I, I'm able to hear. Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, uh, can you hear me at all? We can hear you. Okay. Do you want me to get started? Do you want me to get started or? Let's see, go ahead, Dr. Mitchell, start while you are uh, putting the presentation. I will see you, Dr. Bhatt. Okay, you want me to get started? Yes? Okay, I assume you want me to get started. You, you can start, uh, Dr. Bhatt, and we are just addressing the presentation. But you can start speaking uh, uh, that is okay. Um, should I start? Yes or no? Yes or no? I cannot hear anything what you're saying, but I, I assume you want me to get started, right? Okay, I'll start. Can you see my slides? Yes. Lights are visible. Should I start? Yes or no? Please go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, please. You want me to start? Yes or no? Pardon? Please, please. You can go ahead, sir. Yes. Okay. Fine. So yes, my name is Rajit. Uh, I'll be talking about vehicle grid integration for medium and heavy duty electric vehicles. Next slide, please. So at UCLA, we have been working in the area of electric vehicle and grid integration since 2000 and nine on a practical basis and fundamentally from a research standpoint before that. Uh, what you see on the screen is the UCLA uh, microgrid within which you see on the left is uh, the electric grid operator that sends power into the UCLA grid, which is then fed into the buildings. And finally, on the right-hand side box, you see electric vehicles, you see batteries, you see other loads. 
And the traditional model of the grid was such that the power flow, information flow, and control flow was one directional. But now you see the arrows are bi directional. That means power flow can be bi directional, control flow can be bi directional, and information flow can be bi directional. So we're looking at a future in which a microgrid such as UCLA can, with the help of its uh, electric vehicles and battery storage and solar panels, can in an integrated fashion send a message back to the grid operator and say, I have this amount of V2G, I have this amount of solar, I have this amount of energy in my battery, and I'd like you to take the energy back, and I this is the price I'm charging. So that, I argue, in the future is what's called the prosumer model, where the consumer is not just consuming energy, but also producing energy. So the term prosumer has become important in the last decade or so. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So here you see V1G, there was reference to V1G. V1G refers to smart charging plan, in which what you do is, so for example, here you see an installation that was done about 10 years ago in UCLA in the campus. We installed 42 charging stations, and you see the, the red load is the unmanaged charging, uh, and the blue dashed line is the managed charging using what's called V1G. This was done by one of our PhD students uh, many years ago, and what he did was he said, well, the total peak load should be, uh, can be reduced, if you move the energy consumption out to later in the night, number one. Number two, we still want to make sure all the vehicles get fully charged when they when they need to. So if you can reduce the peak, push the energy consumption to when it's cheaper, you're saving on demand charging. You're helping yourself save money, you're helping the grid lower the peak. Next slide, please. So uh, then we also built a V2G system. This is another PhD student. Dr. Yuba Wan, who was working for Siemens Research. And you see on the, the chart, which you shows the state of charge. On certain days, the state of charge goes up, and on certain days, like the green day, it actually goes down. Why? Because maybe the algorithm discovered that the price of electricity is high in the afternoon, so it's better to sell some power into the grid. Even though you have a little bit less energy, you still have enough energy to get home. So this was about also a decade ago, which is the first time we built it. I argue our lab is one of the first labs to build a V2G system, and for that we used Mitsubishi's help in building the hardware, and we integrated that into the microgrid slide that I showed you in the first system. So this is for electric cars, uh, uh, and, and I'll talk also about medium heavy duty vehicles shortly. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Thank you. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, medium heavy duty vehicles, and here you see on, in this slide uh, what's going on in terms of some background in terms of the U.S. Uh, previous slide. Thank you. What's happening in the U.S. is we have this uh, uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill that was passed in, the, in, in Washington. And I, I, last couple of weeks, I was in Washington for meetings with the U.S. Department of Energy, Department of Transportation, and Environmental Protection Agency. And what you see in this slide is uh, some of the uh, data points that we have found. And uh, essentially, if you look at the level of funding that is coming in from Washington uh, into the country for uh, you know, electric vehicles, electric vehicle charging, clean bus, uh, uh, transit bus, so forth. You can see there's a lot of funding available for electrification of transportation in the U.S. in the next, you know, five, six, seven, eight years uh, coming from Washington. Shows you the seriousness of the effort. And, of course, in some of the early conversations, you talked of California. Certainly, California, we were ahead. I mean, some of the work that I've been doing since way back, since about uh, one and a half decades. Uh, but, but I think now the rest of the country is catching up very quickly. And you can see some of this big investment coming from Washington at a national level. Next slide, please. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about medium duty, heavy duty, because there's a lot of conversation about uh, uh, passenger vehicles. But the challenges for medium and heavy duty uh, vehicles, such as uh, transit buses, school buses, last mile truck delivery, such as delivery by UPS or Amazon or FedEx, and the first mile, such as the ports here in Los Angeles, the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Uh, carry one third of all uh, imports that come into the country. So that's very important here in Los Angeles. And because of that, 
There are 120,000 diesel trucks operating in the ports, creating a lot of pollution. Just like, you know, I mean, I, I was born in Delhi, grew up in parts of India, a lot of pollution. But LA also has certain parts that are highly polluted because of heavy duty, medium heavy duty vehicles. And so now, of course, there's a lot of electric vehicles. So you see a list of electric vehicle manufacturers for buses, trucks, vans, and so forth. And, you know, but there's a lot of challenges. Challenges are the range. The cost of electricity, the stress caused by range anxiety. Drivers think they have certain range, but they don't get the range that the uh, dashboard promises them. Charging infrastructure, there's challenges both on the capex and the opex side. We talked about the opex, demand charges, time use pricing, but the capex is the cost of installation is very high over DC fast charger or medium duty heavy duty vehicles. Uh, V1G itself is so complicated, smart charging management. You know, V2G is, is a wish right now. Even though labs like mine were doing research on V2G starting 12, 13 years ago, from a fact that we demonstrated the first system a decade ago, it still hasn't not made its way into a large, large volume yet. Although there is promises uh, in some market segments. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the technology that was then commercialized from the research. Uh, we have this company called Move that has developed an AI-based smart charging system for electric fleets. From the uh, next slide, next slide. Please. So you, know, you look at electric fleets, fleets that are transitioning from diesel or gasoline to electric, and they're finding that the, the, that the operators of the fleet are very stressed out because the range that they thought the vehicle is going to get in, on a hot day or a very cold day is not quite accurate. Some drivers drive hard, sometimes even up and down the hill. And so it's very, very stressful for the owner of the fleet, the manager, to ensure that the fleet, will, the vehicle will be able to meet the duty cycles compared to diesel or gas. And also, suppose you run out of juice in the middle of the day, you can't just, just go to a gas station and in, in 10 minutes fill up your vehicle. You have to come back to a charging depot and it's going to take you two to three or four hours to charge. So you better plan your day very, very accurately. It's a huge problem. And the second thing is, you know, in the US at least, we're coming for fleets. Vehicles plug in and the charging station is made by one company. The vehicle is made by another company, and the charging software might be made by a third company. And so there, everybody's pointing fingers at each other. If the vehicle does not get fuel in the morning, because typically a lot of the fueling is happening at night. And and so those are some of the challenges. In, uh, yeah, thank you. And that's okay. Yeah, you, you can go to the next slide. That's fine. I'm ready to move. Yeah, thank you. So um, one of the things that our startup company Move has done is we have found that the weather the terrain that's up in the hilly area, the, the traffic, the driver behavior, the vehicle weight, vehicle velocity, the battery condition, and, and a lot of other parameters uh, really impact at the range of the driving. So that's so essentially we realized that if we can take all this data and then we can use AI-based uh, approaches and, and data management approaches, data science approaches, uh, all sorts of mathematical approaches, and actually take all this information and connect it and integrate it and tell the driver, hey, you know, we're going to reduce your stress. And that means that you can drive 120 miles today. At that point, you should come back to this charging station, charge her, and then get back on the road. And then you'll come back again at 6 p.m. If we did all of that, it would help the driver and ensure that the charging actually happens so that we, our software would connect into the bus or the truck, connect it to the charger. And it's like it's like monitoring over and making sure that they can fulfill the duty cycle needs. And that's what we realized. And that's what our startup from our with our students has done. Next slide. Please. So this shows you the dashboard. From the dashboard, you have smart charging management, V1G. The software can do V2G, but today the hardware in the US in a large scale does not do V2G. So there's one sector, the school bus sector, they're doing V2G, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of V2G happening right now. But it will come in the future. When the hardware comes, the software will support that. Next slide, please. So this shows you the dashboard in operation at this bus agency in Los Angeles. El Gardino City, and it shows you some operators using a large touch screen, which is where the dashboard projects all the information. And one thing we realized was because this technology is so unfamiliar and new to this industry, educating them about the prediction, how we do the prediction, how we do the energy management, why should they be doing this? Well, for example, you can see the top right slide shows the prediction of remaining miles. 
a middle slide shows you exactly how what to do the dispatch. So for each bus, it says this bus has so many miles left, and it should come back to recharge five times and so forth. And the bottom right slide you see it says it shows you how to do uh, manage charging. So a yellow curve is without V1G, the red curve is with V1G. So uh, you know, so we have this one system, and we're installing uh, another one shortly. And so it's a startup company with less than a dozen, less than ten people, and uh, uh, so you know it's still in early stages. And so technologies continue to be refined. Next slide, please. So that's the core technology is an AI software system that sits on the cloud. No installation needed. It connects to this dashboard and, and at the fleet operator side. It connects to the telematics of every vehicle that the fleet has. It connects to the charging stations and it controls the charging stations. If you have on-site battery storage or solar panels, connects to them and stores them. It also gets data from the third parties such as the weather, traffic, and so forth, and puts it all together. And it's, it's sort of like think of it like a on the edge service for the recharging of fleet. Yeah. That's how the system works. Next slide, please. So thank you very much. I think that's my presentation. <laughs> That she's able to the and Hello? Thank you for a wonderful presentation. technologies that you are experiencing with so thank you uh, so much, and I'll invite you now to bring back our uh, uh, presenters, presenters on stage, uh, one for a good photograph, and also if there are any questions from the audience, we'd like to take it up now. Abhi, uh, we are still there with us. Please put on your camera for a group picture. Yes, I am here. Getting very late in the night here. I hope it's okay if I. Yeah, take so we a have a question. Uh, it was a very wonderful. Uh... So it's very late in the night here in California. I hope it's okay if I take your leave. Thank I have to you. get up at five o'clock in the morning. You're not able to hear the you, Doctor uh, Guy. No, Mr. Guy. Yeah, Mr. Rajiv is saying it's light in California. Very, uh... yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, just wanted to uh, open the floor for uh, questions. If any audience question is there for uh, our presenters, let's see. I mean, we're running late, but we'll quickly uh, pick up a few questions and we can wrap up. Rajat sir, thank you so much for joining. And uh, since uh, I think there are some issues with the uh, WebEx, so uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us for this session. Sir. Good, good morning, good evening. Thank you so much. Uh, it was wonderful having you. And uh, the relevant for the Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Please don't let me say all these features. I still don't think is existing. There are manufacturers who also manufacture the same line DNA, but not all of these are using them.
I agree with what you're saying, sir, but uh, as of today, what we can do is we can have a short, short term opportunity charging of 15 to 20 miles. But when you're driving at a 400 kilometer path, you would have some charges which can give you opportunity charging. And I have, uh, I am aware of many, uh, I mean, I can see manufacturers also here who are giving you the top up opportunity charging of 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Wherever you are taking a break, as of now, this is only till we have a full network developed and we have more robust technologies coming in. The way out could be that whenever you are planning a route of 400 or 500 kilometers, what you could do is you could do an opportunity charging of 15 minutes as a top up, go up to the next level. So within 15, 20 minutes also you of charging, you can get a good decent amount of range depending on uh, what vehicle you're using. So that could be one small solution as of now to actually adopt EVs to understand EVs and to understand the behavior and to understand the Indian mindset and culture also. Everything is new. Just like EVs are new, we are also new to the EV. It's both ways. It's bi-directional. So we all have to adapt to it and, uh, you know, we cannot be just saying all the time, okay, there's no charging opportunity available. I cannot do it. So somewhere we have to come midway to actually adopt and easily, you know, move ahead with the EV. Sir, one more last question from my side, sir. Sagar, sir. See, generally what we have learned or what we have seen is today's life of this EV vehicle battery is five to six years. See, after five to six years, how will you go to dispose of these things? See, it's a major issue. Even renewable solar rooftop or whatever it is, what we are doing there, silicon is a major issue for disposal after 25 years. Whereas uh, in your case, these are chemical batteries only. How will you going to how you have planned to dispose of after this uh, life cycle? Okay, so there is a two plan. Worldwide, I'm talking. Then I'll come back to India. So worldwide, uh, worldwide, what we are thinking right now? Uh, after electric vehicle, it goes to the second life. It's called second life of the battery, where you can use for let's say you want to power this room. Uh, which is a renewable power uh, can be stored in that second life battery. So once you use the first life in the electric vehicle, second life could be the renewable where the uh, power consumption for power rating is less compared to the electric vehicle. So that's the second life. And third life is the once the battery second life also over, it goes down to 65 DOD. Then what will happen? So you can use it for uh, let's say recycle it in one solution to recycle all the element which is used lithium cobalt or the very uh, precious element then we recycle and then again reback that by make the battery again that's the way world is thinking our country second life is little bit problematic why i'm saying because our temperature is very high like uh, ambient temperature is high our operation conditions like our behavior towards the electric vehicle is not very good it's very rough so maybe battery torture on the battery will be too high the second life prediction for India is little bit problematic as per right now. If goals, maybe time will tell that second life is possible for India or not. Uh, as per my prediction, second life may not be there for the India. It will go to the directly recycle. Uh, you need to go for recycle because you cannot have a landfill for these batteries because a lot of uh, elements are there which need to be recycled and then make the element, uh, let's say, banks ready, let's say, cobalt bank lithium bank, nickel bank, which we don't have. So that can be again reused for the new battery production. So that's a policy is going on. It's called lithium, uh, what is called uh, circular economy. So that is a policy. I was the part of it. So lithium circular economy is going on. So how to utilize the old battery for further making the new battery so that the ecosystem is not disturbed. The policy is already there when it's here. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Prakash. My name is Prakash, General Manager, Westcom. Just uh, to supplement the question and reaction. Now, globally to per se, not only in India, globally, for EV, if you have this SWOT analysis, the weakness is the range anxiety. Range anxiety problem is to be solved by both 
the stakeholder the oems and the academicians like mr rajat uh, sorry ranjan range anxiety what my colleague said now this is the problem why the ev mobility is not taking uh, in a full speed now to address this one as uh, the distribution utility we have taken a first step this is what these are all the initiatives to make a public awareness consumer awareness and to give the public to address the range anxiety problem we are we are setting up across the state number of charging stations the charging stations are also if you ask me the question last year it is a ac charging two and a half year two and a half hours dc charging one hour 90 minutes 45 minutes now in next couple of years it will go down to 25 minutes this is the basuraj for your question the range anxiety problem you expressed no it is not only a common it is a common uh, question asked by any uh, public regarding before procuring the vehicles electric vehicles whether it's a two wheeler or a four wheeler sir nano mysore bangalore inda mysore go beko 150 km ide madhyadale charging station illa 60 km nalla nintodre en madbeko idu anxiety idralli ide idanna address madodakke naavu distribution companies na naave en madidivi iga number of charging stations na set up madidivi amela fast charging stations inna jaasti bartta ide next year hogta hogta the duration of the charging time will come down it will come down to even half an hour so avaga enagutte nimge anxiety andre neevu correct questions kelidre idu ellarallo ide iga idak bandre stall ak bandre first question keladane sir id est kilometer baruthe est hour odutte these are all the issues just i uh, address the issue this range anxiety problems it is once solved it will pick up like double speed thank you very much Certainly. Thank, Thank you, you so much for adding on to that, sir. Uh, Thank you. And um, so we are like you know, as uh, we talked about new technologies and uh, uh, like you know, the definitely going forward uh, with the emerging technologies and uh, the different new battery chemistries that we are experimenting with. This uh, these questions will be resolved uh, going forward. So uh, any other question? Because we have uh, one two questions from online, and before we move on to next session, we are already running okay. late. A no? question. Uh, madam, is okay today. What is the all the stall EV vehicle manufacturing is okay, but inside in the heart in the battery, all the vehicle manufacturer is show the battery with manufacturing. This will be start up Karnataka or start up India or will be abroad. Is the out the key or bro EV vehicle manufacturer battery inside how did they? Other skill any there? duration you know experience you know please cp show the along with the vehicle english la illa ev vehicle manufacturer is the inside the battery is there no he show the battery manufacturer data is very important today otherwise the vehicle is okay but the battery battery is a very ah dr sir please See what happens is uh, the new regulations and new standards are coming in for the batteries also and for the safety. Mm -hmm. Now what you're saying is correct that uh, the whole the entire vehicle is sold. Now when you're talking of battery swapping and when you're talking battery as a service, which are the two new uh, things which are going to come up very soon. Uh, battery swapping is still existing, but battery as a service which will start very soon as an official uh, mm -hmm. policy part of it. this uh, the display of battery uh, parameters and manufacturing uh, labels will be mandatory to be mentioned it is already on the agenda of the standardization committee to bring it in it will take some time but it will come they should but uh, we cannot impose that on to the vehicle manufacturer we can put in the standards we can recommend for standardization and we will definitely put in your uh, views also as a consumer to the forums that we represent we will do that thank you thank you so much and uh, let me just take uh, two more questions uh, one uh, abhishek you are with us i know you have answered uh, already but there were uh, there was one question i would like to take up for uh, so that you can answer for our uh, uh, you know physical audience also uh, b2g along with the ev chargers uh, home or offices 
are going to uh, severely disturb the utility network planning. So how in California case or uh, you know any other country this is uh, this can be taken care of and uh, can you please share some valuable insights on this? Over to you. Okay, thank you. So I answered it on online platform, but I'll, I'll try to briefly summarize over here. One second, we can't hear you. Just give me a second. Can I speak now? Yes, please. Okay. So as I answered on the online platform, so uh, this initially looks like it will disrupt the utility planning, but no, this will not. Why? Because in California, for example, you have demand response, which is already a part of the resource adequacy. Okay. What Professor Rajit was talking about, they have done some kind of uh, sandbox testing at UCLA campus. Now, resource adequacy is already a norm, a regulatory norm in California where the utilities, IOUs like pg and they have to upfront project what is the kind of resources they are going to have. Uh, basis the demand forecasting they are going to have. So when you have such electric vehicles, uh, which are going to give you services under V1G or V2G, so they will have an estimate as to this is the ultimate potential. So once they have an estimate, so when uh, as is done for the any distributed energy resource, you do the scenario planning. So scenario A, 5%, 10%, 20%, 100%, something like that. These are the scenarios, the probabilities with which the distributed energy resources will actually respond to the DR event call. So such DER, including the electric vehicles, will also become a DER, uh, is also a DER, and they'll respond to the DR event call by the utility. So this is, again, what I'm trying to stress is, this is a part of the resource adequacy. These things are already standardized in states like California because demand response is a distributed energy resource already being used in California widely. And this is not a big thing for California and utility. So in India, if you take a concourse uh, or a relevant, first of all, in India, we have to recognize the demand response or DER as a grid dispatchable resource under the regulations. Then only we can have this V1G or V2G as a resource, and then it will not disturb the utility functions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Abhishek, for answering that. Uh... And um, I won't take up uh, more time of yours. I know it's very late. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, should I take one more question? Dr. Rashi, there's one question for you. Uh, you talked about cell balancing, um, uh, you know, the active cell balancing. So uh, the question is, is active cell balancing being used in BMS? Well, uh, I have been uh, propagating and advocating active cell balancing since 2015 in India. And we manufacture BMS with active cell balancing of up to 10 amperes, which is substantial amount of cell balancing compared to anything available in the market as of now. So yes, it is available in the uh, uh, in the BMS. Thank you so much. So that brings us to the end of this uh, very wonderful interactive session. Thank you so much uh, to our esteemed uh, speakers. Uh, thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, Dr. Gar. Thank you, Professor uh, Sagar Mitra and Dr. Rashi for joining us. And wonderful to have you here. And uh, thank you to the participants for your active participation. Thank you. <laughs>